You're listening to the Board Game Snobs podcast, a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> Welcome to the Board Game Snobs Podcast. I'm your host, guy. What with up? me today. I can't control myself. With me today also is here, Charday. I am Charday. What up, dudes? It's been a while, Charday. It's, it's been a while since I first saw you. Who sings that? Metallica. No, wait. I thought that was stained. Was that Creed? No. It's been a while since it's I first saw you. That's stained. Okay, they all sound the same. <laughs> Although I love them all. Sometimes Metallica voices, not Metallica. is iconic and legendary. Okay, not Metallica. I didn't mean Metallica. I meant Don't to say put Creed and in the same Creed. Been, Creed their voices are going, it's been a while. It's been a while. Uh, with hair and sweater up here. My sacrifice. <laughs> anyway, they're all. I like Creed. Dude, I do too. I'm not hating. I, I love it. It like he was. No, I, honestly, I, I wasn't hating. It's just one of that, that style of music. Um, it's it's all the same. You know what I mean? It's kind of like this grunge, but not really grunge. Kind of a rock, grunge rock. That's what they call yacht rock these days. I don't know where I that phrase comes from. Yacht rock was seventies. Uh, I don't know. All right, you know what? <laughs> I don't know. I just shot that out there. I thought I had heard it called yacht rock. I think I've also heard it called butt rock. I don't know what why it's called butt, butt rock. rock. Are you butt rocking? Man. I guess so. I mean, you, you start doing you some know, dancing. Yeah. That's moving weird. your hips i don't understand today's like vernacular like any of it i don't get what's going on in the world with well, that's anything typical for you well yes. it's mostly because i'm not on twitter like you you know i'm on instagram oh that's yeah. my thing pictures only Picture- <laughs> you, know, you, you look at pictures and don't read yeah i get it no i do- <laughs> that's why you start reading see spot run shut up how dare you <laughs> that's a new shipment came in for you on amazon by the way <laughs> Spot runs into the forest this time. Spoiler alert. Gabby, you're the worst. All right. So it's been a while since I've, it's been a while since it's I've been had you on the show. So what have you been up to? What have I been up to? Guys, I today, me and Gabby went skating. I'm trying to get Gabby into skating. Um, He got some skates from me. Free skates, actually. From a free um, skate. That's what they do at the skating rink. They're like, all right, free, free skate. skate. I love free skate. That's That means losers can also get on the floor after the couple skate. I thought, no, okay, I've never heard that in my life. I thought free skate meant after the games, because they do games, and they're like, we're going to play some games, and yeah, then after that. They, they would have games, races, couple skate. Dude, wait, is that a and 90s if you a thing? Because I've never heard of couple skating. Really? In my, genera- be a 90s, in so. my generation, I have never seen that or heard that in my life. And I don't know if that's because we're in it this. It might be too exclusionary these country days. Country town. So they're like, <laughs> singles are out. Only if you're a couple. I mean, who does couple skate? Like, I've never. Heard I did. That. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you know what? Honestly, I'm I'm, I'm not mad at. I'm not in fact, against the, it. The I'm not against rink, it. The skating rink is where I first wooed my wife. Well, I, every time you say it, I. <laughs> it is. In Texarkana. You think that'll happen for me? I do like a crossover ma- maneuver with my... I could do the crossover back then. Cause Is that my, like a thing My thighs did? didn't prevent me from crossing my <laughs> legs over at that time. I they was, didn't like stick together. You skinnier. didn't have any monkey powder between your legs? How dare you? What? It's a thing. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. I uh, I wooed my wife on the skating rink floor. He did. That's where I sealed the deal with her falling in love with me. I really do love that story because I'm like, maybe that'll happen to me because like I love to roller skate and like, what if I'm in the rink and then like this guy like, hey, how you get? I can teach you how to backward skate. Is that like a thing? I, I never learned to backward skate. 
that's unfortunate. And I it's really want to easy. learn it. But it's like a language. I'm doing good to just stand up on him these days. Well, I'm proud of you for even skating with me. It's so fun. That's what I've been doing, guys. I, I've been trying to get back in it. I, I was on a hiatus like a little bit. Um, I hadn't skated in like three months and it, I kind of started having withdrawals. Like I'm like, oh, <laughs> I need a wheel. So I started like skating inside. Well, there's a wheel. There's a way with skating i realized how much it makes me happy and like wh- why did i wait this like so long to not skate i think it's because i moved to the country and moving to the country has you eat a lot of peaches make move into the country you don't have to sing it i made the reference pe- i made Sorry, the reference it's so, you don't hard. Have to it's sing so it. hard it's hard you did the same thing wait wait i was being actually no, actually, no you did i did that. the same yes, thing i did that exactly what's all wrong with continue? that continue okay well i'm not that great at banter <laughs> as you can tell I am yep. just rambling. Oh, where's but you're, Jerry? You're allowing me. Wait, where's How dare you? Oh, you want Jerry on no, the podcast? Well, no, see, the thing is, I'm always, you know, I'm always the one to ask Jerry, are we going to podcast? Are we going to podcast? And he never gives me an answer. And he never calls me to say, hey, when are we going to podcast? I'm available this day. Trash talk, trash talk, trash talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm available all the time. The problem is Jerry's generally available after his children go to bed, which is children. like eight o'clock and beyond. And by eight o'clock, I'm way too tired. Eight o'clock is not even late. Like you, know, you are like, I'm ready by the eight o'clock. My brain is like, all right, I'm going to sit down and watch some TV mode. So you go into like this, like, I don't really have the energy to blank zone. I don't really have the energy to podcast. I mean, I guess for you guys, cause y'all podcast like, two hours i think that's a lot uh yeah when we have to get a bunch of them out there but you know what you're right i wouldn't want to podcast at eight i don't like podcasting late at night it's late i'm I'm tired yeah i I like to chill about seven o'clock onwards and you know it's it it is eight o'clock right now by the way (laughs) we gotta shut this down Shut it. So, Gobby's contradictory. Like okay, sorry, stupid chair has uh, arms. Yeah, the arms are Gobby too. is contradictory to what he just said because it's eight o'clock. Right but now. this would be when we would be starting with Jerry. Okay. Well, and, well, I mean, I'm weekend? not saying we've done it weekend? before. We've done it before. But, it, but Jerry never calls me to say, hey, you want a podcast? Never. Not once. Not I don't once? think ever those words no have come out of Jerry's way, mouth. Jerry. It's always on me. To get him you know to this podcast. Means, you know what this means? You are dedicated. I'm the one, I'm the You're one a dedicated cares. man. I'm the one that cares. You care about your fans. I do. I appreciate that. I appreciate Jerry, you. Jerry, step up, dude. Exactly. All right. Well, so, I've already said what I've been up to. What okay. I'm going to say the one thing I've got to get out here. Okay. Go for it. Everyone needs to watch Fire Country. That is the, the greatest show on CBS passes. Paramount Plus. If you, it, it is the best soap opera I've oh my seen in a God. long time. I mean, no. you, number one, you have this blonde haired, blue eyed, muscular devil of a fireman. He's a he's a convict. Just right there. But stop. his but his the reason he's in prison prison is not like he he didn't like commit murder. He like I think he held somebody up at gunpoint, but. I think the gun was even empty. Like, he just, like, has this rough past with his mom and dad. So, like, he feels real bad. And he's, like, trying to make amends every step of the way. So, they go into this fire, like, for the convicts that are doing good and, you know, like, Mm. headed the right direction. They have an opportunity to knock time off their sentence by joining this fire man squad. I don't know what they're called. I'm not a fireman. But sounds, sounds right. Every episode <laughs> is absolutely amazing with drama, tension, family drama, action, action, fire action, EMT action, ambulance action. All you EMT firemen out there, you would love to hate this show because I like passing. I like telling Jerry the phrasings they use, the verbiage and all this stuff. I'm like, have you ever said this before? They're always referring like getting to put the ladder on the alpha side of the building. Jerry's like, alpha side of the building. I don't know. He like Jerry's You're always talking. Really I like into to tell Jerry show. what they're watching. <laughs> okay. Wait, you know what I find fascinating is that they kind of just like make up crap that nobody really uses to make it sound like they know what they're talking about. Well, I find it fascinating. I think it's it fascinating, Gobs, that it is you a fantastic show like this show yeah, because needs to watch it. it is a show I will never, it's never like, watch. You remember ER? 
No, you don't. It was way before I've your time. I never watched ER. However, this is the I, ER of modern times. Okay, I, I don't know. I, I don't understand. Is it like like a Grey's Anatomy type stuff? Because you know, I've never watched Grey's How Anatomy. I have, I've never watched it, but apparently, it's a it's big way show. Better than Grey's Anatomy. Um, well, with Fire Country, I feel like that's your guilty pleasure, but I don't know. I could, I, I could be completely wrong. That's just a show because me and Gabby watch shows together a lot, and we have like a similar taste in TV and movies. But uh, Fire Country. But then is we also not have some it. severe divergences. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> severe. Whoa. Severe. He says that because I've been really into like Korean shows, and I have to say, Korean dramas are kind of like your Fire Country with the soap opera. I find that I like soap opera type shows internationally. Like I don't like American soap opera like it, i don't know it's just you sure you sure ate up smallville what do you think that it, was that has superheroes in it if it has like have some, you, you have not seen fire country it has he, aliens if it Bodhi has, is a superhero dude, if it has aliens oh and his name is Bodhi. anybody named Bodhi, man i <laughs> like, would worship he could you come in surfing on the ways Bodhi. okay listen smallville was different because he it was superman when there's like a superhero or any kind of alien i love that Bodhi's like he's also a superman okay he's like a fireman you should see him shirtless okay that doesn't even move me at all period i was moved okay maybe it'll move me if i see it just a little bit but like usually it doesn't move me not really he is fabulous. Everybody in Dang, it. Is, everybody Gummy, in it, it moved Gummy. <laughs> there's another character named Jake. They're like Adonises. They're just like A all. What? They're all built like Greek gods. Gosh. Yeah, Gummy. Yeah. And I Gummy. aspire to be like them someday. You can do it, Gummy. I'm far beyond that point. I can barely skate. <laughs> you skated today. That's I good. Barely, barely That's progress. Let me have a question. I have a question. It's, it's no excuse. Why are you so passionate about skating? Why are you so passionate about board gaming? You don't answer questions with questions. You actually can, because then it, you will understand why I'm passionate. I like I'm the passionate. puzzle of board games. Puzzle. I like, I like the- figuring out what the moves are, what I do to earn the points. Uh, I like to see how the game works, the mechanisms of the game, and how they interlock with each other. I like the art. And I like the camaraderie of being with my friends. I love that explanation of why you're passionate about board games. Thank you. I am passionate about skating because I like the techniques you can do, the like the artisticness of skating. And also it it's it's freaking fun. Also, I love to be on wheels and skating through a Ooh. parking lot. And I like to learn new things like that. And I feel so free, stress free. I feel I can do anything when I'm skating, even if I fall and bust my face or my elbow or my which ankle, you did today. which I did, but it's fine. I have peroxide. Gabby took care of me. He's like a doctor, pretty much. Like, pretty gradu- much. I've been watching graduate. Fire Country. Doc- You're welcome. He's Fire Country, like, graduate. I, I swooped in. <laughs> he swooped in. I put carried on you some off a tennis court. Antibiotic ointment and peroxide and a band aid, and I'm good to go. There you go. Anyways, I'm j- skating makes me. It's like top five makes me the happiest. And also What's not just that, one? the culture in skating. Is, hold on a second. The culture. <laughs> the cul- Why you got to ask these questions? The culture is pretty cool. Like the people who skate, like they're yeah. all so cool. Super chill. Everyone, anyone who say, roller skates, they're, ch- they're like yeah. cool people. Skating, roller skating has a very different culture than the stereotypical skateboarding culture. What's the stereotypical the stereotypical and I'm I'm harking back to the 70s and 80s of when the skateboarders were like the outcasts. I didn't even know they were an outcast. Well, that Have makes you sense. seen Thrasher? Never. Gleaming the Cube? Never seen it, dude. <laughs> I know, I, I know, I've seen a lot of stuff, but um, those just are remember, the two skateboarding I was, movies I know. Of. I was born in '96, so yeah. I mean, skateboarding is kind of like, and even what's weird, snowboarding. It's like the rebels of, like skiers were like the rich people. Honestly, I think when I think skiing, I think rich. rich. I don't know yeah, why. Buff, it buff, just seems buff, like a rich thing. Buff, man, let's go down the mountain on Not our skis. Judging, but. Uh, but skiing is more like skating. Whereas, oh yeah, I can kind of see that, especially with the little mini skis they have these days. 
but snowboarding was like the rebels, and they're always like they were like doing <laughs> the tricks and stuff. Yeah, it's weird. I don't know why Is this Star Wars a singular. <laughs> The, oh my god! The, and, and, yeah, the singular plank attached to two feet has a much different vibe to it than um, like skateboarding and snowboarding, as opposed to roller skating and skiing. Like I don't know, it's weird. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. You're saying like they were outcasts, like no one liked that, or yeah, they were always just like I don't know. It, Maybe they're always like, you know, in your parking lot and all the owners of stores are like, get off my parking lot. That's literally me. Like, I literally am always finding, trying to find somewhere to skate. And I feel like we're part of that. I've never seen like a movie about rip. What what was it? There was a movie. Rollerball. Oh, there was. Roller bounce. Roll bounce. Roll bounce. There is roll bounce with Bow Wow. Bow Wow. Was it Lil Bow Wow? Little, well, no, Bow Wow. I don't remember which one well, it was at the time. Is there a medium Bow Wow? <laughs> there's a mid range Bow Wow. <laughs> mid range. So uh, there's rolling bounce, but that was just about the whole, that was just about the skating. Like they were dancing and but stuff. But they had a right? competition. I've never seen it. No, no, so no. I don't they know. have a competition of skating. Okay. It's but, uh, really good. The movie I was referring to, and they may have been on rollerblades because that was a big thing there for a second. And I oh, think it's kind of coming back. But roller ball is like futuristic and like their lives were at stake and they were. It's a, it's a, actually, there's a remake. There was a cheesy 80 movies, 80s movie called Rollerball. Then they remade it. So it's not roller skating, though, right? I don't remember. I, they may be rollerblading. That is super. But they weird. were on two, they were on both feet. They weren't s- skateboarding. So it looks like this movie is 1975. It was like roller derby probably inspired. Oh, that's another thing. Derby skating yeah. is not something I am at all into. Like, that's something I just will never... I don't find that at all f- at all interesting. Would you go watch one? I'd watch one, but I would never do that. Like, that's not something I'm See, I feel like if in. I was to get into skating, I wouldn't mind roller derby. To me, that's... Okay. It's like football on skates. Okay, that makes sense. So, roller derby, to me, it's like... um. It's more sporty. Yeah. I like I like the artistic uh, dance skate. I like right, I right, like right. I've, I've recently I've found that I, I'm into skate park park skating like the ramps and stuff. I, I think that's pretty cool. That's the only sporty part of skating roller skating that I like. But I'm more into the seventies. Like we're dancing, we're 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 hitting up Abba. We're doing some spins and doing some dribble. Like I I, I like that part of skating. But really. I find that roller skating, it's just everything about it I'm passionate about. It it doesn't matter what it is. I just, I love everything about it. Follow your passions. Yes. That's what people say. I do. And you too, Gubs. You too. You too. You too was one of my passions. I, <laughs> especially when the Joshua Tree came out. Joshua Tree. I listened to that album literally the other day. <laughs> Seriously. Mothers of the Disappeared makes me cry. They're like very, they're amazing, I'm going to say. They're pretty good. Although, I think when they got to Achtung Baby, they kind of just like made up words that rhymed with each other. <laughs> I don't think I've listened to that one. It's like some of their lyrics just make zero sense. But that's a lot of bands. But a lot of their lyrics were like for like what's happening in the world. Well, that used to be. Oh, okay. Listen to Octung Baby. Okay, I'll have There's to check that out. several songs on there. It's like, what is he saying? <laughs> I kind of... Zero but sense. Does it sound good? It's like, what rhymes with blue? That's basically how they made the you song. You too. You too. Yeah. All right. This is Board Game Snobs Podcast. We talk about board games. We talk... <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. But we are going to talk about a few tonight. Tonight, I say that. Don't listen to that. I'm not going to time this podcast just because we're recording at 8 o'clock, which is usually too late for me to record with Jerry because I'm tired. Gabby's an old fart. (laughs) But I am. (laughs) Makes me mad. So, I played one game several weeks ago. I played a game with my brother-in-law's brother-in-law's small child. Paw Patrol, don't drop chase. It's like Jenga, but yet... You have these hexagons, and you have a the the form that they go into is like a hexagon in itself. Then you have these mini hexagons that are supposed to be ice. So you're putting these. You have to put it together first. You flip it over. You put a little. It's a doggy chase. 
<laughs> just a random. It's a. It's a. It's a. Okay. It's a stand up P. What do they call that? Standee. <laughs> it's a standee. It's a little cardboard mm, piece you stand gotcha, up. Gotcha. 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 So it's like Jenga in the fact that you have to tap out these little ice cubes along the edges. And the person that makes the standee chase fall through the ice loses. Just like in Jenga. I got when it. you're trying to push out the pieces of wood, if you make the tower fall, you lose. Well, in this one, instead of going vertical, you have a horizontal grid. I feel like I'd like that, hexagons. though. It was very fun. I enjoyed this game. It's a it's a, a dexterity style. You're sitting here and you're tapping stuff out. So you have to be smooth in what you tap out. And uh, there's some pieces, if you, kind of, if you kind of tap around with your little plastic hammer, you can feel which pieces are loose. A little plastic hammer? Yeah. It's a so, child's game. So did you buy fun. this game? No, it was theirs. Why would I buy a child's I, that's game? Why I, I, don't, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. You're a board gamer. So I was like, did you buy the game? No. Or was it there? No. I didn't know this theirs. information. It was theirs. And that I played so it and it was fun. And I enjoyed it thoroughly. And I thought about buying it just for fun. As a board game snobs person, Because it was fun. That's, was, you can get it from Walmart. I don't know. I don't know why they bought it. Fascinating. Anyway, I wonder Paul if Jerry Patrol, would like it. Don't Drop Chase, a fun game for your children. Have you ever um, played the game Jenga when you take the piece and there's a like a uh, question on it or a statement that you no, have to no, do? No, that's I dumb. recently um, saw that on a TV show where they were playing that and I'm like, has Jenga always been like that? Like, are my trip? Like, has it always been where if you make it fall, then you have to take that piece and then read it and do it's almost like a truth or dare thing. Is that a thing? No. I, I, I've, I think I have seen what you're talking about, but no, that's stupid. Well, I, I'm only asking because I've never actually played Jenga. I've only just seen it. But like, I'm like, wait, is that how it works? It was on a Korean show. I've played it. It's it's fine. Uh, you can easily take the pieces that are, you know, loose. Usually they're the ones in the middle and everybody goes for the middle pieces. And then eventually you run out of those and then you have to go for one that's on the edge and then you take it and you lose. I honestly think the little statement would add something to it i don't think it's stupid so I think like it, what give me an example what was one that it said you uh, had to do something or you, is yeah, it asking like you, you like okay for it, it was like i said it's like truth or dare secret. like what who's the prettiest girl around like something stupid like that but I, that's just one of those like just something i remembered but like i'm sure there's cooler sayings but i just find that to be more interesting with it because then it's like you you made it fall, so now you have to d- take this action of saying this or stating this or doing something or doing like, something stupid or not even just saying it was doing something stupid like okay, go outside and I don't know put uh something on your face and scream or go streaking I don't know whatever I just I just those are I examples that I'm no. making up. No, I just think I think it adds something. Like I, I'd you be so? I'd be into it actually. Maybe maybe you should get it then. I don't know how I would find it, but I was like, "Is all Jenga games it's on like Amazon?" I'm sure. Just check it out. Because I'm like, this this is this sounds actually more just interesting. Type in on, go to Amazon.com. Type in Jenga. Actually, I have the questions. app Amazon. I don't go to Amazon.com. Okay. <laughs> That's like so 2008 or something. What, what you, if you're on a PC? Where are you? I. <laughs> Do you never use PCs anymore? I literally never use my computer. It's like dusting. I like I don't even know phone. why I have a computer. Okay, so that was Paul Patro. Don't drop chase. Board game snob approved. Also, we played Can't Stop. Charday was there for Can't Stop. Can't Stop. What did you stop. think of Can't Stop? It took me a minute to really get into it. I enjoyed it when I kind of was when it was like maybe thirty minutes in. It's a long game. It's actually not. I added some extra pieces so that we could play more players. That's why it took so long. Uh, I'll have to be completely honest with you. I do not like Please. gambling games. I don't like them <laughs> at all. Actually, they're very it's called push ti- your luck. Tiring. It's not gambling. Well, not gambling. Sorry, I mean, you're kind of gambling. Uh, not with gambling. Your luck, but, but really, you are gambling. But not, you're not. There's I'm not, not like talk, any not stacks. talking about money or anything. I'm just saying it's a it's a chance. Like push your luck. Yeah. I hate those kind of games because they're endless. I feel like we're constantly going and I and we're never ending. And also, I suck at them because I I don't ever get to the top. I'm always at the You're bottom. You're not good at it. No, I'm, I'm. You don't know when to stop. No, no, no. I urged you several well, times thing, to stop because and you did. I'm trying to end the game by like trying to get myself out by like making really but you can't poor go out moves. Of can't stop. I know it sucks. It's like I gotta keep going. So 
I realize Camp Stop that was one of the Camp, best games of all time. You are out of your mind. I love you are Camp out Stop. of your mind. It no, it's fantastic. not. No, it is. It's it's fine. It's no, it fi- is fantastic. It is okay, fine. here's the thing. You know, also where it's best on Board Game Arena on the computer, you can just click a button and it does it all for you. Oh, it's endless. I hate no, it. No, it's not. Like each game's like five minutes. It's one of the fastest games there is. We played a physical copy where we had to take the pieces, move them, move this piece over here. It's it's way too fiddly of a game. Um, I have the one where it's like the little felt, the 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 polyethylene, whatever, the mat. It has the mat. <laughs> I know what you mean. And like these roofs. It's not yes. the cone style game that is in a, the, the old style game. This is like the cheap version. I don't like it near as much as I love the BGA game. I can play that. I've played that BGA game hundreds of times. It's addictive. But I've, you played it. I you played it. And it, I mean, this is a game listen, that took you a while to catch on to what was going well, on. No, no, it's I understood. I understood what was going on. I just wasn't. I was. It was fun, just kind of making fun of everyone. Like, come on, you got it. You got it. You, you know, take the bet. Take the bet. You know, keep going. Keep going. That's fun. Keep going. Or That's it. you know, shaking the dice and getting this, but. I was kind of like, I cannot wait till this game is over. That's the feeling I had. It did go on too long. I never had that, that feeling game. for, for example, the game we were talking about early, or later, Beer and Bread. I never felt that. I love Beer and Bread. It was really good. I enjoyed that very much. Well, I don't like... Alert. I, I'm just saying, I do not like games that are... I feel like it's... I mean, you're kind of strategic. No, there's no strategy. Actually, you know what? No, I, I, was trying to, I was literally trying to give the benefit of the doubt. It's just brainless and mindless and i don't like it i don't like it i'm over it i'm bored i mean there's some odds there are odds at play and what you should play and that's a fine four or five minutes and then i'm done okay. i'm over it okay you have a short span like game. every other one in your generation i, I get it hate it this way what say TikTok. that again say okay. that again no 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 actually i don't watch tiktok you huh? watch you are part of gen z <laughs> and love, you're 46 years old I, TikTok. I am 26 i never watch tiktok all right so let's talk about the game that we're here to talk about let's do it beer and bread by capstone games designed by scott holmes for the poor beer and bread is a card drafting resource management style game you are using barley wheat rye hops and water to make beer and or bread you draw five cards it and makes there me want are beer. there are one two three four five six seasons to this game and there's a i guess i don't know what the first season is called but anyway, there's a dry season in which you draw you draw up fewer resources, you seed fewer resources on the board. So to start the game, you seed resources. You seed so many hops, so many barley, so many wheat, so many rye, so many hops. And then so those are there are limited resources in that phase. If all the hops are gone, well then you're just out of luck. We didn't run into that issue. No. We did not run did into not. that issue. I'm sure it can happen. We got pretty close, but we didn't run run into that issue. Uh, in the first season, I wish I knew the name of it. There's a dry, I'm going to say wet season. Dry, Honestly, wet. Honestly, how do you know, know which season? Like, does it say on the card? Because like on the, board, no, on the board, on the board, it just has fruitful, the fruitful years. It, where does it say fruitful on the board? On this, right so here. it's not on the board. It's, on the, it's, it's actually on the, the instructions. It's in the instructions. So you can't see that. So on the fruitful that. season, uh, you have a little bit more. So like the wheat in the fruitful season produces seven. In the dry season, it only produces four. So it's like that as you go. So first round of the game, seven wheat. Second round of the game, four wheat. First round of the game, during the fruitful years, when you draw up the five cards, you draft them. Each player... We'll play a card, and then you hand the rest of the stack, the rest of your deck, over to the other person. Then you play a card, hand the rest of the deck over to the other person. So which, just like that. Which, by the way, I kind of like that um, that uh, season where we switch cards because then it's like if my cards suck. Right. So that's a different. that's a balancing thing. That's always a balancing thing, so that somebody doesn't get all the good cards and stuff they like, and you're not stuck with stuff you don't yeah. like. The dry season, you, you draw up to five, because certain cards, there's three actions you can do on the cards. You can lay it down in front of you and collect the stuff at the top, so it's you can collect the wheat, barley, rye, hops, water. You can fulfill an order by playing. Oh, well, this order of beer requires two waters and three wheat. 
So it's very simple in that regard. Or you can play the special action at the bottom in which you slide it under your side of the board and then you have that special action throughout the game. It could be in-game points. It could be special actions during the game or extra places to store your food. You have limited storage. You have nine spots to store all these different items. So storage is kind of important. But also, I didn't run into it a whole lot. I was able to fulfill uh, my side of things. However, I liked storage. I ran into storage, storage was good. 100 times. Oh, yeah, you, you did good on storage. I needed storage, man. So there's three different things to do with the cards. Each season, you play it slightly different. You're either drafting or you're not drafting. So for in the first season, the fruitful years, the stuff you lay down, oh, I forget the phrasing it uses. Harvest? Is that what it I is? I think I remember harvest was one of them. Yeah, harvest and store. So if you're harvesting, that means you play the card in front of you. You take whatever it has on top of the card. What If it's a wheat and a rye and some water, you take that from the areas that you collect those from. You put those in storage. You keep that card in front of you. Then the next round of the dry season, you pick that card back up into your hand. So if you've played three cards you're harvesting from, you pick those three back up, and then you only draw back up to five. So you only draw two into your hand. Then there's three cards played to the board. So there are like other options. So you can swap out cards with the cards on the board. Those cards must be played immediately if you do swap them out. Then after the dry season, so after basically two rounds of play, the cards on the board and all the cards that are down in front of you that you've been using for harvest, they get discarded and you start again in another fruitful season. It's a very straightforward, nice, easy, relaxing game. I found it pleasant. In the beginning, Gobby was like, I will, you know, basically we made this deal. If Gobby goes skating, I have to play one of his board games. And, you know, I held up to my deal. And I, I played this game with Gobby. And at first, Gobby was like, I got to show you the video on how to play. And sometimes I will straight up zone out when you play those YouTube videos. Well, this uh, a good thing about it, it's like seven minutes long. Yeah, I, I, I like and that's pick the important stuff. But then at the same time, while I'm li- looking at this video, I straight up will be thinking about like, okay, did I get six pack of beers the other day? I'll be thinking about a whole kind of whole other conversation, but it's related to beer <laughs> because we're talking about beer. Anyway, I, I paid attention to most of it. Okay, I'm sorry. But I have to say. Maybe that's sometime- why I had trouble playing Can't Stop. No, I hadn't had any trouble playing. Oh. You know, I had no trouble playing Can't Stop. Mm. I just was bored the whole time and mm. I was ready to be over. And also I was chancing everything so that I just was like, whatever. I wanted some excitement. Anyways, we're not talking about that one. Um, This game I found very, in a, it's balanced strategic. It wasn't too, like too many options, too many things to remember. Although, although... The um, I don't know what you call the little spots that uh, what would you say that that is, uh, the extra upgrades, the uh, the upgrades. Okay, the upgrades I will say were a little bit like extra where you have to remember those and the each time you um each season, and you could have like f- ten cards on under there, and like you have to remember all of that that was the only thing that's the so only like, thing that i don't like about certain board games where i have to have i have all these there are some options. hard things to remember like, like so in the upgrades crap. you can have cards that give you in-game points you can have cards that it's like okay if you draw if you uh, collect barley this round or if you collect barley in the harvest phase you collect not one but you collect two barley or at the end of the card phase, you can trade in a card that you don't like for another card. Or at the end of the seeding phase, you do this. So there's these things that in the upgrades, you kind of have to keep track of. Those dang going upgrades, uh, It could be easy man. to forget those. Those were That was like the only thing I like felt like, oh my God. Other than that, I enjoy this game very much. I I love the, the switching out of our cards, finding our or uh, actions which one to do and the actions were really simple and like three actions you could do and it, it was very straightforward like you were just saying like it was easy and fun at the same time because some games can be easy but not fun yeah and i, I like that. The, i like how fast this game went like you have one That's another two, thing three, four five <laughs> six. you have there's there's basically you're gonna have six rounds I like how borderline ADHD. I, I don't have it, but like sometimes I get real like I'm over it. I'm done. I, I need something different, but I never felt that with this game. Like I get fidgety. I didn't feel fidgety with this one. 
It goes very fast. Uh, the one, a minor thing I have some issue with is it can be hard to plan ahead. The best way to plan ahead for cards you want to fulfill, you can fulfill a beer, you can fulfill a bread. As soon as you fulfill a beer, you put it on your board, you put it in the brewery. As soon as you fulfill a bread, you put it in the bakery. Now, you can only have one of each fulfilled. To clear those out, you have to upgrade. So you have to play a card into your upgrade slots. Once you do that, well, then you can get rid of the beer and the bread, and then you can fulfill some more. Or there's cards that can say, oh, now you can fulfill up to two in the baker or up to two in the brewery. So that really wasn't an issue because as soon as you have something you want to fulfill, you just need to slide an upgrade in that clears the board. Then you can lay another card down there. Well, weren't you saying the word refresh? <laughs> yeah, it's a refresh move, basically, of getting it's your like stuff the out. Internet browser. And then you can put in another beer refresh. or another brewery. Do you always explain your games on your podcast? Well, no. But this one is so simple, it's easy to explain. Okay, because I find that when I've listened to your podcast um, with Jerry. Um, I don't, Jerry I, usually does it. I don't always. Well, yeah, I hear Jerry most Sometimes when he feels like it and he's not, you know. I feel like this is the most conversation we've ever had about like a board game on your podcast. <laughs> like usually you guys don't even talk about board games. Well, because this one we just played. Well, like it's sitting here in front of us, freshly played, and I remember it. Oh. And I like that fact. Like, it is that easy to remember. The rules are very simple. The layout of the cards is very nice. You have the top, the middle, and the bottom. Those are the three actions you can take. Mm-hmm. I like that. The resources, the little wooden resources, they're nice. The board has some nice art on it. Like, the brewery has, like, the little kegs out to the side. It's pretty The neat. bakery has, like, I mean, it's just, I like the art on the board. The the warehouse has like some mm-hmm. doors open and people going yeah. in and out. I honestly I enjoyed really that like, art it is, too. It is. It reminds me of like a uh, there's it's a it's a Uwe Rosenberg. He makes farming games. You haven't played any of his games, but his games are very pleasant in that way. You're just relaxing. Like in the countryside. I honestly felt like I could open up my own brewery. <laughs> on it. Like I could start making it's beers. just relaxing in the in countryside bread. here. Making some bread, brewing some <laughs> it made beers. Me, it made me like want a six pack. If this was my life, I would be happy. I would too. <laughs> Get me some barley hops. Okay, sweet. so here's the twist of the game where I lost to Chardonnay. <laughs> and I... I, I me, you know you always lose when I play with we, you. I, we Loser. watched the video... He told us the rules. I completely didn't even think twice about it until we started doing scoring. And I said, so let's, oh, let's talk about the scoring. Actually, it's right in front of me. Okay. So the scoring is, I got it. So the scoring is you brew beer, you brew bread. You don't think it, you brew bread. <laughs> you bake bread. <laughs> My bad. You brew bread. You separate those cards that you have fulfilled. And each card has, so say you've earned $15 brewing beer cards, you've earned $10 brewing uh, baking bread cards. You score, much like between two cities, you score the low one. So if I earned $15 brewing beer and $10 baking bread, my score for the game is the $10 making bread, not the $15. Yes. I completely, 100% forgot about that. Totally. And I went heavy into beer. You did. Literally every card I made was a beer card, except with the exception of two bread cards. I'm not crazy about this lowest score. I'm, I think it's a balancing thing. I hate it. So that you don't do what I did and just go heavy into one. So total scores. I have beat... I had 33 plus 7. I had 40 points total. You had 15 plus 16. You had 31 points total. So total scores between the beer and the bread, I beat you, right? Mm -hmm. You did. But that doesn't matter in this game because they separate the two scores. They separate the beer scores and the bread scores. Your highest score, out the window. You score your lowest points. Now that's now, but but then I take my lowest points compared to your lowest points, 
and the highest of those wins. <laughs> are you, are you guys exhausted? <laughs> I am exhausted. Like, what the heck? I, wish you could I do us. not like the scoring system. Uh, I will okay. tell you that for sure. Who's the author? I'm not- <laughs> The let me author? call. Let me like Isaac e- has a ball. E- e- email him, please. <laughs> I'm Wordy not, I'm, email. <laughs> what? I, I'm I'm interested as to why they do think. I think it is like I said to force you to balance. Don't go heavy. You have to do both. Okay. I don't know. It's it's an interesting, interesting. scoring system for sure. I liked this game. It was fun. The so minus was the scoring. Weird. I was. Going by something weird. Minus the scoring. Minus you the You enjoyed the game. Stupid scoring. Yes, I enjoy this game I very like much. The scoring has tainted it your has view of It has made me angry. <laughs> insane with anger. I'm insane with anger. All right. So. It was good. The scoring don't care for everything about the, everything else about this game. It's so smooth. It's very relaxing. Smooth like a hazy. <laughs> this game is very simple, very straightforward. This is like a UA Rosenberg. I never know if it's a UA or UA, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's a Rosenberg game dialed down to gateway, like like almost ticket to ride. But this game is a little more because of the uh, three different ways of playing the cards. Okay, not like ticket to ride, okay? Better. I, know you, I know you hate that game. I hate that game. I'm, but I mean, this game is a step above that. Definitely, uh, it is. But it's a, it's a, it's like a gateway entry version for UA Rosenberg games, <laughs> which is a good thing. I like that, and uh, we enjoyed playing it. I would play it again. It's a nice, easy game. To I'd play. switch up my strategy according <laughs> to the point system. You should not sc- switch up your strategy because you won. <laughs> Oh, well. I should switch up mine. <laughs> okay. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of the Board Game Snobs. Sharday, thank you for coming. Hi. Bye. Visiting. Uh, <laughs> because it my friend fun. Jerry is no longer around these days. Gosh, Jerry. I'm he having to replace you. He doesn't call me as much as he used to. Oh, are y'all breaking probably, up? Probably are y'all be, divorcing? Probably because I'm working way more than I used to. Oh. Used to, I, I could just talk to him 24-7 on my phone because oh. I was just driving a truck down the road and... Didn't have nobody to talk to. Now I'm on the phones all day. Separation anxiety. Oh, what's happening? I'm a claims processor. So people He's are in- calling in saying, hey, I got this and I got that and I got to like fix them up. Requires me to work 8 a to job, 5.30. A job requires... 8.30 to 5.30, Monday through Friday. A job that requires him With talking benefits, to people. I am. My people skills which are... Which he doesn't talk ...really to getting worked on because I have to be super nice to you even when you're really stupid. Which is funny because, I and mean, you're a really nice people. guy. I am a nice guy. I mean, sometimes you. you don't come across that. How dare you? <laughs> Just kidding. Well, you a stranger, you're like, oh, I don't know. Well, no, I don't talk to strangers. But like my you, mom and dad taught me that when I was a small child. Well, stranger uh, danger. Well, for me, I'm just saying when I first met. What you, if I just answered the phone like that every time somebody called in? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know you, stranger I know. danger. I just want to get my car fixed. <laughs> anyway, but we do have plans. Let's see, this will come out. Wednesday, April the fourth, I believe. We have plans to get together, me and Jer Bear, on Good Friday. Nice. I believe it's April the seventh. Yep, that's right. I'm off work. We have Good Friday off. Oh my god, I wonder if I'm off. So probably not. I'm very happy about that because I I need a day off from this job. I've been working <laughs> for like five days straight every week. That's a lot. Welcome for me. to my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, me and Jerry and Enrique have plans for. Uh, this coming Friday as of this podcast recording and uh, we'll get some more games played and pods recorded until then I'm Gabby I'm Shardy bye bye later dudes thank you for tolerating this episode of the board game snobs stay classy (laughs) 